Hi everyone! We have a lot of content that helps you with the why and the how to's of fine tuning. But in this video, I'm going to focus on how you can create more reliable and repeatable fine tuning pipelines. I'm Shelby Eigenbrod. I'm a principal Gen AI ML specialist solutions architect, and I spend a good majority of my time looking at how to go from proof of concept to production, focusing on how to operationalize generative AI workloads. And fine tuning pipelines are often a small part of that broader discussion. Let's first start with what a fine tuning pipeline is. So when we talk about a fine tuning pipeline, we're just referring to utilizing a tool that's capable of orchestrating and automating the steps that are required to fine tune a model, which includes not only the data and training steps, but also the evaluation of that model, as well as the management of those model versions. In the case of using LoRa, parameter efficient fine tuning based techniques, as you see here, you also potentially have variations of model versions to consider, including the base model used, the ad trained adapter layers, as well as the merge model if you're merging the model prior to deploying. So what's the benefit of creating a fine tuning workflow? The automation of the workflow creates more reliability in the collection of key metadata about the base foundation models, the data, the training libraries, and evaluation metrics. And manually collecting this metadata is really prone to error. There's also more reliability in the processes used to tune and evaluate, as well as the technology used. So things like libraries that are used as part of your fine tuning workflow. Pipelines also provide the increased ability to repeat the workflow. This is especially true when you're regularly performing fine tuning activities based on feedback, or in use cases like hyper-personalization. The second benefit is increased traceability. I spoke about improved reliability and having a consistent way to collect metadata, but this also helps with things like increased transparency into providing insights about how that model was fine-tuned. So what base foundation model was used, what the metrics were used to evaluate performance of that model. With fine-tuning methods, a common evaluation approach is to incorporate human-in-the-loop feedback, which can be done across the end-to-end -end generative AI workflow. But here specifically, I'm referring to pre-deployment human-in-the-loop workflows. So this could be through fine-tuning techniques such as RLHF or as part of the normal evaluation workflow in something like a user acceptance test evaluation. Either way, being able to efficiently integrate human feedback is important to a fine-tuning workflow. Finally, when you're looking at fine tuning across use cases or tasks, as the number of generative models or adapters increases, it becomes increasingly important to look for operational efficiencies in the tooling and processes used to create and manage those models. Which brings us to SageMaker Pipelines. Pipelines allows you to programmatically create pipelines using either the SDK, or you can alternatively author pipelines using the pipeline definition JSON schema. A few things to highlight here would be the step caching and selective step execution capabilities, which allow you to either automatically skip steps based on cached results using the same input or explicitly identify steps to skip that were part of that pipeline run. You can also schedule or trigger your pipeline based on specific events through the native integration with EventBridge. You can either set this up directly in EventBridge, or you can use and schedule it directly using the pipeline schedule constructor as part of the SageMaker SDK. Finally, one key benefit is there's no servers to manage, so you don't have to manage any of the underlying infrastructure that's hosting your workflow tooling, which reduces operational overhead, but also cost because with pipelines, you only pay for the compute steps that are used as part of the steps within your workflow. So things like training jobs within the pipeline. Pipelines includes typical steps that you'd expect as part of a pipeline tool, such as you know, conditional steps and the ability to explicitly define custom dependencies between steps. But pipelines also includes native steps that allow for easy integration with most of the SageMaker features that are commonly used as part of these automated workflows. These supported steps are kept current with the latest and greatest SageMaker capabilities. And this list here contains a view of the natively supported steps, which are included in SageMaker pipelines. So things like processing for data preparation, SageMaker training jobs for model training. But you'll also notice inside here, 
Pipelines does extend to other AWS services like Lambda or EMR, as well as the additional flexibility to include tasks that are executed through jobs on other AWS services or jobs outside of AWS through the callback step. Pipelines can be visualized within Studio, like you'll see in the demo, but you see here how incorporating these fine tuning steps into a pipeline workflow, we're able to rely on SageMaker pipelines to reliably capture that key metadata that we talked about before, about not only the pipeline itself, but also the steps within the pipeline. Finally, one other key benefit to mention includes the more recent release of our simplified developer experience for pipelines, which allowed for the ability to easily execute pipelines from the SDK, like I previously mentioned, but also enabling developers to more easily create pipelines through the use of a new step decorator, which allows you to wrap your Python function code using the step decorator and have pipelines automatically convert that into a step within your pipeline. The simplified developer experience was created because customers were looking for easier ways to author pipelines. So this new step decorator allows you to easily wrap your Python code into a step decorator, then either let pipelines infer the step order based on pipeline dependencies, or you can also explicitly highlight dependencies between steps. Let's look now at a fine tuning pipeline through a demo. So in this demo, we're gonna show how to build out a fine tuning pipeline using SageMaker pipelines and specifically a fine tuning pipeline for a parameter efficient fine tuning technique that's commonly used called LoRa. And for this, we're just gonna use kind of an out of the box data set, a sample data set to show how you can fine tune using SageMaker pipelines and create that repeatability reliability in your fine tuning workflow. And for this, the base model that we're gonna use is actually a quantized version of Llama 2. And if we look at the detailed architecture here, this is what the fine tuning pipeline will do. So it's a simple pipeline that's gonna take our base foundation model and a fine tuning data set that we provide. We're gonna pre-process that data set. Largely since it's already in process form, we're not gonna to do too much to it there, but then we'll have a step in our workflow for that. We'll also have a step for the actual fine tuning, again, using LoRa as a technique. And then we'll have a step to merge the model and evaluate the model. And keep in mind here, we're gonna show you custom code for evaluation in this particular demo, but you can also use our um, evaluation library as well to do this. Uh, we'll also have a conditional step that's gonna check whether the relevancy score, which is the, the evaluation metric that we're looking at, is above a certain threshold. If it is, we're gonna go ahead and register that model. And we'll talk a little bit about how we'll register that model considering with adapter-based fine tuning, you have both the foundation base model, you have the adapter weights, and then potentially the merged model if you're choosing to merge before loading and deploying. So we're gonna skip over some of the general setup, which is just installing libraries specific to this notebook in this demo. But we'll go into here some of the one-time setup that we did in the model registry. So there is an example notebook that will be provided, but inside model registry, which is a managed service within SageMaker for collecting key metadata about a model version. So not only how it was built in terms of, you know, the containers, the algorithms used, the model artifact itself, as well as evaluation metrics. So with model registry, one thing I wanna point out is there is this notion of model collection, which is a hierarchy of models. And a really good use case for using these model collections happens to be these uh, adapter weights. So you'll see inside here, if we look at this diagram, we will load the base foundation model into model registry. So that way we know the exact version of the foundation model that was used for this fine tuning workflow. We'll also, we've created a model group. So this is done in that first notebook. We've created a model group for those fine tuned models and created a model collection so that we could actually have that collection of adapter weights grouped together logically within the model registry. And you'll see when we actually go to deploy out in this particular picture, we won't show a deployment workflow here, but when you do go out to de deploy out in terms of model management here, you're combining that base model so you know what is all the relevant metadata about that base model, and you're combining it with all the relevant data about either your fine-tuned weights, so those adapter weights, or merge models in the case of you're merging it before loading and deploying that out. So that way we know for every single deployed fine-tuned use case that's out there, we know the base foundation model metadata as well as the adapter weights. So within this, we're just using a data set canned out of the box data set for the sample. Um, so we're just identifying that within there. 
And then here's, we're gonna actually go ahead and create that fine tuning pipeline. So you'll see here, we're gonna use that step decorator, which you'll notice essentially we're wrapping our Python code for a particular step with that step decorator, which SageMaker pipelines will automatically convert into a step within your workflow. So first we do have to set up each step, right? So every step in your pipeline has some type of code backing it. So the first step here is to pre-process the data set. So in this case here, you'll notice what we're doing in this particular function that we're gonna wrap with that step decorator so it becomes a step in our pipeline is we're loading the data set from S3. We're going to split that data set into a train test validation data set split. We're going to initialize a tokenizer and then tokenize and chunk the input data. So this will ultimately feed into our next step, uh, which is fine tuning. So if we look here, you can see this is where the step decorator comes into place. So this is all you need to essentially take your Python logic, logic that's performing a particular task within your workflow and wrap it into a step inside your pipeline. So this is the step decorator. And then this is all the Python logic that performs that data pre-processing. So once we've set that step up, we can then go on to our next step, which is the training step. So once again, inside this one, we're taking the input of those data sets that we just created. Uh, we're taking the base foundation model, of course, right? Because we need that for fine tuning as well as the training parameters. So these are the fine tuning parameters we wanna use for fine tuning. We'll download that base foundation model as part of the task. Um, we'll set up the LoRa training configuration. We'll fine tune using that training configuration. And then ultimately we're going to come out with a set of updated weights that we will upload to S3. So within this, you'll see once again, this is all of our training code. And to create a pipeline using that, once again, we just had to do the step decorator. So we have our existing Python code. We use the step decorator to automatically create a step inside our pipeline. Keep scrolling. And then the next step here is our evaluation code. Like I said, in this particular case, we're doing some custom evaluation code, but you can also use our FM evaluation library as well and incorporate one or more evaluation or workflow kind of quality gates within your pipeline. So in this particular case, we're taking that test data set and the fine-tuned model weights, uh, loading that fine-tuned model in, running some inference to then uh, generate answers to those questions, evaluating those, and calculating the relevancy, relevancy score. So once again, we're using the step decorator basically to wrap our Python function code into a step inside our pipeline. And then finally, we're creating a register model step. So assuming that our model passes that conditional check, right? Where the relevancy score is above a certain threshold, we'll then go ahead and register the model into the model registry. So this again is our register model function code wrapped with a step decorator where we will go ahead and register the model if it is um, meeting the threshold that we've established. And this one is the con conditional logic code. So the reason you create the step that comes after the conditional logic code is we have to refer to the step that we want to progress if that condition is true. So we created the register model step, step but then we want the conditional logic code behind that. So this is where we're gonna actually check if that evaluation metric passed. If it does, we'll register the model. If not, we'll fail the pipeline. And then here's where we create and start the pipeline. So you'll notice within here, we are essentially naming the pipeline. We can pass runtime parameters as well, which is good for kind of templatizing and changing your pipeline in certain parameters at runtime versus having to go in and directly change your pipeline code. And you'll see here, we're only passing one step, which is conditionally register. That's because pipelines will automatically infer the order of steps based on the inputs and outputs that are defined as part of each step. And then we'll upsert, and upsert is basically just creating that pipeline that you've defined. 
and then we'll start the pipeline. So here is the start of the pipeline execution. And you can programmatically get the status of the pipeline from a local environment, from your notebook, but you can also visualize the pipeline in the pipeline execution directly inside Studio. If we go into our pipelines, let me go into one execution. So this is that pipeline reflected through a DAG, so a visualization. You can see these are all the steps that we created, the status of each step, green is it passed. Then if you click on the step similar to what we saw in the presentation, you can see different metadata about each step as well. So that was it. We created a fine tuning pipeline using the simplified developer experience that allows us to wrap our Python code with the step decorator to automatically create those pipeline steps. And in terms of considerations for deploying to higher level environments, so now that you have that, those fine tuned weights, there's a couple different options, right? The first option there is deploying the merge model. And this is what is done in the demo code where we essentially merge that base foundation model with the adapter weights prior to deploying those out. The other option is to deploy the base foundation model and fine tune weights separately. So each has advantages and disadvantages, which I know are covered in other deep dive videos. Uh, but one thing to consider there is incorporating that with your own CD pipeline to then go out and provision the infrastructure as well as the related services for the deployment part of your workflow. In the demo we just did, you saw how to create a fine tuning pipeline using SageMaker pipelines and then register that base model and the model's adapted weights into SageMaker's model registry where it can then be deployed using a continuous delivery or continuous deployment pipeline. The other thing you should consider automating within your workflow is the creation of a model card from a governance perspective to be able to document the intended use of the model, whether that is the merged model or the adapted weights, as well as capturing model documentation such as risk ratings. One other extension to the pipeline you saw would be to integrate this workflow with SageMaker projects to further standardize and templatize the workflow, setting up any of the standard integrations that you would need automatically, as well as incorporating source and version control for your code. This example is focused on a case where you're doing regular fine tuning of a foundation model which provides traceability and reliability, but another use case we discussed where these fine tuning workflows would be useful is in personalization. So in this case, you may be creating personalized models similar to what you see here in terms of an avatar generation use case. So in this case, you need the ability to scale out the pipelines as well as create a repeatable, reliable process that scales across personalization use cases. So this is actually handled by SageMaker Pipelines as a managed service and the ability to scale out multiple pipelines in parallel. Finally, I wanna leave you with some resources, starting with a GitHub repository with a lot of different code examples, including those specific to operationalizing your generative AI workflows, which includes fine tuning pipelines as we discussed here today. Second, there's a link to documentation for SageMaker pipelines and more specifically, the step decorator simplified experience that we went over today. Finally, in our examples and demos, we showed SageMaker's model registry for cataloging and managing models at scale. However, this blog here goes into a bit more detail on some considerations for model version management, specifically on some of the more popular parameter efficient techniques. In this case, what we focused on was LoRa. So in this video, we went over what a fine tuning pipeline is, what the benefits of building a fine tuning pipeline are, as well as the benefits of utilizing SageMaker pipelines to build out those fine tuning workflows, as well as some resources to follow up on. If you wanna dive deep and get your hands on some of the tooling, feel free to follow along in some of those code examples we provided. And as always, thank you so much for your time and reach out on LinkedIn. I love connecting with others in the space.